This is the video solution to a problem where a ladder is leaning against the wall. We're going to use torque with forces and distances and uh, summing up the forces in the x and y direction. That's the first and second condition of equilibrium to solve. So we've got a 5 meter, 200, long, or 200 newton long ladder that rests on a wall. The ladder's center of mass, or center of gravity, is 3 meters from the bottom, and that's along the ladder. There's no friction on the wall, but there is a coefficient of friction along the ground of 0.3. How far along the ladder can a 750 newton person climb above the ground? So let's look at the forces. Now, as I look at the forces, I've got a, a wall, so that's a surface, a normal force, and it tells me there's no friction on this brick wall, which is pretty amazing, but there isn't any friction up there. Um, if there was friction, I would think it would go upwards to keep the ladder from sliding down, but there isn't any. On the ground, there is friction, because they tell me that's 0.3, coefficient of 0.3, and there is a normal force, I'll call it eta 2. The ladder itself, where its center of mass or center of gravity is located, that's 200 newtons going down, and then the person's going to climb somewhere on the ladder. I really don't know how high they're going to climb, but they're just going to be up on the center of ladder, up, up on the ladder itself. So I'm going to sum up the forces in the x and y direction. So if I sum up the forces in the x direction, I know that 0 is equal to friction minus eta 1 for the horizontal forces. And the vertical forces, or let's see, that means friction is equal to eta 1. And the vertical forces, 0 is equal to eta 2 minus 200 newtons minus 750. So all the forces going up minus all the forces going down. That's how I got those positive and negatives. And I can solve that to get eta 2 is equal to 950 newtons. And then I remember that friction's in this. So friction is mu times eta, and mu is equal to 0.3. That's great. That means that uh, I can establish another equation here. But notice something about the friction. I had two mu's, eta 1 and eta 2. Friction's on the ground, eta 2's on the ground, and that's why in that formula it's eta 2, not eta 1, because eta 1's not where the friction is located. But this means that eta 1 is equal to mu times eta 2, because I can set my two frictions equal to each other and they're, what they're equal to, to each other. Now to sum up the torques. So when I'm summing up the torques, I'm going to do something different. When I'm solving beam problems that we've been doing in the past, I've been taking the forces and breaking those up using trig into horizontal and vertical pieces. That is, horizontal or in the same direction parallel to the displacement and perpendicular to the displacement. But this time, what I'm going to do, instead of applying trig to the forces, I'm going to apply trig to the distances. Because all I need is a distance that's perpendicular to the direction of the force. So when I'm summing up the torques, the ladder isn't going to rotate. So I'll set that equal to zero. So it's um, and this is the second condition of equilibrium. That's why it's stable. And now let's look at the torques. So I'm going to draw a line along the direction of the force. And torque is defined as a line, the moment arm, between the fulcrum, or the pivot point, however you want to call it, at the bottom of the ladder over to the direction of the force. So I can look at this as a triangle. I've got the hypotenuse along the ladder. I've got the direction of the force is one side of the triangle. And perpendicular between these two, that's going to be the moment arm that I'm looking for. And that moment arm is perpendicular to the direction of the force. So the moment arm is going to be 3 meters cosine 56. Great. So my torque ends up being the force of 200 newtons and the distance 3 meters cosine 56. And they're perpendicular to each other. That's how I know that they're set up that way. Where the negative sign come from? Well, to figure that out, I'll do the pencil test with my dog, Sophie. So Sophie's a smart dog. Let's see what she can do. All right, so put your paw on the fulcrum at the bottom. Dun, dun, dun. And now take your other paw and reach up and put it where the force is applied. Now move the pencil in the direction of the force. So it rotates. Great. Now I can visualize that it's rotating in a clockwise direction. And clockwise is defined as a negative torque. So that's where the negative sign came in front of the torque. All right, so let's move on. Let's look at the next force. So I'll fade this out and go to the 750 newtons. Do the same thing with it. So if I look at this, I'm going to draw a line going down in the direction of the force, just on the paper. If this is my extended free body diagram on the paper, that diagonal line, I would just draw it going straight down. And now I can see that I have a triangle here with the hypotenuse being along the ladder, the force being the direction going downwards, and I need the length along the bottom of my triangle. That's going to be D cosine 56. And that's going to give me the torque. So I've got the force, 750 newtons, and the distance, d cosine 56. And the important thing is that they're perpendicular to each other. It's negative, so where did the negative sign come from? Again, the pencil test. And again, Sophie. All right, so Sophie's going to put her paw on the bottom of the fulcrum, and she's going to reach up and put it where the force is applied, and then move the pencil in the direction of the force. Nice work. And now I can see how the pencil's rotating. So I have something to visually show me that. 
and I can see that it's rotating in a clockwise direction, and that's a negative torque. And that's where the negative sign came from, that negative torque. Okay, so let's keep this process up. Fade these forces out, and I'll go to my last force on the ladder that's not at the where I've decided, decided to make the uh, pivot point on the bottom. So the normal force at the top. The normal force at the top, I'm going to extend a line in the direction of the force. So that's that blue line that's up there. And again, I'll think of this as a triangle with my extended free body diagram being the hypotenuse, that is the ladder being the hypotenuse. And then I've got the normal uh, the force for the normal force going horizontally. And I need a line connecting the fulcrum at the bottom with the direction of the force. And that line has to be perpendicular. So it's going to make it look something like this. And the reason why I like this as a triangle, because that more obviously shows me what the trig is going to be. So the length of the opposite side is going to end up being 5 meters, that's the hypotenuse, sine 56. So at this point, I've got the distance perpendicular to the force, so now I can have the torque. So the force is going to be the a to 1, and the distance, 5 meters sine 56, and they're perpendicular to each other, and that's the definition of torque. Now it's positive. How to get the positive? Again, my old pencil test, and again, Sophie. So Sophie's going to take her paw and put it down at the bottom where it pivots, that's at the fulcrum, and then take the other paw and put it up at the top, and she's a little bit closer this time, and then she's going to move it in the direction of the force so I can visualize what's going on. So that force is going to cause a counterclockwise rotation, and a counterclockwise rotation is positive, and that's where the positive sign came from. Next step, algebra. Time to find the distance. So when I do the math, I come up with something like this. Friction is equal to mu times eta. F is equal to eta 1. Eta 2 is equal to 950 newtons. We found that earlier when summing up the forces. Eta 1 equals mu times eta 2. We found that earlier as well. Plugging in my numbers, I get eta 1 to be 285 newtons. And then I have my torque equation. And from the torque equation, I just put in all my numbers. And I solve for d to get 2.02 .02 meters.